I'd like to give a big shout out to the Hoodoo Gurus who have given us permission to use part of their song, That's My Team, as our new podcast episode intro for all of their music. And whenever they are going live or performing live, head to their Facebook and their Instagram. The links will be in the description below. Be sure to give them a like and a follow as well on Facebook and Instagram. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Final Tackle Podcast and we've actually got a special guest with us today. He's current NRL referee and former first grade player Henry Paranara. First of all, thanks for joining us mate and how's your day going? Yeah, no, cheers mate. Very happy to be here and um, no, it's been it's been a good day so uh, looking forward to it. Oh, that's good stuff. Um, so obviously the elephant in the room is you were a player and you're now a referee. Uh, first of all, what was it like and what are the contrasts being on the field with a whistle and being on the field playing at both the top levels? Yeah, it's, um, I, I, I actually think refing is, is harder. And, and I guess the reason why I say that is because I grew up playing. I never had this, um, I never had a thing of wanting to go and be a referee. Mm-hmm. Um, it was always, it was always my dream to, to play. Um, and so Obviously, when you get to the highest level, you know, playing in RL and, and so to speak, you kind of feel like, oh, well, this is all of that hard work that you've you've done to get here. Yeah. Um, as as opposed to riffing, I, I mean, like, oh, worked obviously extremely hard to get to where I got to in terms of refereeing, and um, yeah, that that is definitely diff- it, it's different. Mm-hmm. Um, in the sense of of body shape, that's probably the biggest one because. The, the the biggest thing for me coming from a playing background was I had to obviously strip a fair bit of weight. Yeah. Um, yep. So I was I was probably playing at around 101, yep. 102. Well, yeah, because you were a um, lock forward sort of sort of player. Yeah. 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 I, I had a yeah. That's probably the size of halfbacks these days. Aren't yeah. <laughs> you know how wrong. big they are. Yeah. Or a winger Jeez, even. Yeah. Bigger. Oh, <laughs> mate. I, I don't envy James Tedesco or <laughs> Kyle Fout. Those blokes having to try and tackle Mike Acevo. Oh. But um. Yeah. But yeah, that that was obviously the biggest the biggest thing, and um, it t- it took me a fair while mm-hmm. to to do that because if you if you look at from a playing background, if we're talking you know conditioning wise, it's all about expl- you got to be explosive. It's yeah. up off the deck. It's all about maximum effort for you know minimal amount of time. Whereas with refereeing, it's more about endurance. Yeah, you've got to last um, the whole eighty minutes, sort of you, thing. Yeah, yeah. So and then. Because I was so much heavier, you know, we've got like say Gavin Badger, who's probably our fittest. He's Honestly, our I've, I've seen him at a training session. He's so freaking Mate, fit. He, he runs laps around the eels. When when I saw Mate, them at training a yeah. few months ago, May he defies physics. He he, does. He's Benjamin Button, you know, <laughs> yeah. like he's he's sixty five kilo ringing wet. He's I don't want to say it, be wrong in his age. I, I will say he's closer to fifty than he is to forty. Yeah, and he is, and he's still fit um, as he's a freak. He's a freak. You should see him, and he runs. He runs laps around us, you know. Oh, he and, does. <laughs> uh, you know, so so I, I'm I'm you know I'm weighing in at 92 kilos now. So that's 30 kilos more than I have to, you know, that I have to carry compared to them. So that was obviously the the thing that I had to work really hard on. Yep. Um. The the other thing that was really tricky was, um, and everyone like you, you kind of think of it as a as a given. It was the was the rules. Mm. You know, yeah, so, is there like a lot you know, more that you didn't realize were in the yeah, in the book? Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, like oh, people, you know, talk about you know if a kick if a guy's taking a shot at a uh, field goal, yeah, and if the kicker gets fouled and like he misses that the penalty's in front of the post, mate. When I was playing, I had no idea. Like just something like that, you yeah. know, or or like if the ball hits the referee. It's dependent on the team who's territorial. Whereas I would have just said, "Oh, just give the team back the ball." Yeah, but it's not. It's not that, you know. Yeah. So we've obviously changed that now. Um, but coming in, actually knowing the rule book, because obviously being a ref, you need to. That was something that you actually had to study, needed to know, and you had like if there's one thing that you don't want to get wrong, it's a rule. It's a ruling of error. Like you can say you missed a knock on right or, yeah. or you, you know there's a knock on or you know i should have called that pass forward but an actual law book error is um is something that we you know we need to get right yeah for sure and speaking of the rule changes obviously there's been quite a few since covid is since the covid restart with the six again uh the captain's challenge was at the beginning of the season but more or less a new ruling and the one refereeing style co- go- coming back into it um how are you personally adjusting to those rules and what are your thoughts on it and how it's impacting the game um now um in terms of impact i think it's obviously uh 
had a positive impact oh, so I'm far. Loving it. <laughs> um, you know, with with the six more, um, I, I like personally. I don't think it's the one like people talk about one ref v two ref, um, but I think the actual the biggest change of all of it is probably the six more call. Yeah. Because Definitely. what that does is that eliminates a, a stoppage, mm. so to speak. It so, eliminates a kick for touch. It eliminates a yeah. Sometimes eliminates a scrum. Yeah. So, like, if you if you, you know, say if you have t- six or eight ruck penalties or however many there are, six more. That's you know, if you're talking say a minute per one of them, that's an extra eight minutes of yeah. ball and play time, so to speak. So. Um, that's probably the biggest rule change. Well, I mean, um, I'm loving it. Like when I, from a fan's point of view, I've been obviously the last few years been watching it. It's been stop start. Maybe out of the 80 minutes, you'll see about maybe 45 to 60 minutes of gameplay. Whereas since the six yeah. again, you're seeing a solid 70, maybe even actual 80 minutes of gameplay. Yeah, it's 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 hectic. I mean, like, how's it I been remember... going for you with your um, endurance? Well, and stuff? <laughs> so so the first is like endurance wise, I, I was okay. It was mm-hmm. more. It was more mental capacity. Okay. Um, like, Having to so remember you, the so, six again sort of thing? Well, well, not so much that. It was just, it was downtime mm-hmm. or lack of downtime. So, yeah, yeah. If, so, so when we had two referees, like, so perfect example, I'll give you, you'd go as a knock on, like, if it was, if we had two refs and we'd have a knock on for Friday the six again rule, we'd call knock on, we'd scan, we'd look, we, we'd turn the shot clock on. We obviously have to, there's that other rule change with the, captains or the Captain. teams allowing where they want to put the scrum yeah yep so we'd, we'd look, look and we'd go where do you want the scrum in the middle shot clock on and then as a head ref i'd go and stand on the 10 right yep and i'd let my <laughs> i'd let my pocket pack the 10 and you know, then yep. he'd deal with that like it was yep. something that i didn't have you'd, to worry you'd about sort of delegate so, it, yeah so i'd had maybe 15 seconds yeah which is still like, a lot I'd to just, get your breath you know well, yeah, so like 10, 15 seconds where I just regroup and go, okay, start again. This is what I needed, you know, like that. Start again, regroup. Um, all right, let's start. Let's yeah. reset. Whereas that's when more it, or less going out the window when it now. Went to, when it went around three, because we'd had, we'd gone from two ref to one ref. Yep. We'd gone to six again. We'd had the captain's challenge. All in the span of, I think, three months. And the captains had asked, and the captains had also you know, had a decision where they want the scrum. Yeah. So my time, like, actually having that 10, 15 seconds... It's gone. ...went from that to, okay, all right, knock on, where do you want the scrum? And then you're waiting for it, and then you'd, someone else has come over the top saying, all right, shot clock on, captain's challenge over, yep. here's the scrum, you need six players each side because what happens now is, and you, I don't know if you'll see it as a, um, as a fan of that, um, teams... Put uh, on defensively, they'll put different players in the scrum depending on yeah, where the will. scrum is packed. Yeah, they will. Yeah, for, I've seen for it. defensive. I've seen structure. wingers pack in in the in the scrum, and I think well, I'm thinking what? But now you're explaining it. It's really yeah. Well, when well when um when the scrums are changing side to side, and they're not knowing, players have got no. Some players have got no idea mm. where yeah you know, whether they're coming or going in the scrum. Yeah. So then I've, all of a sudden I'm hearing ten seconds in my ear. I've only got four players at a scrum. I'm going shit. <laughs> you need these players at the scrum before the because we don't want the shot to clock to go off. And so from from having fifteen seconds, I've yeah. gone from that to having two. Yeah, it, it'd be you know, which is <laughs> that's nothing, a crazy adjustment. You know? so, yeah. So you have that, and then um, and then obviously one ref. Like we've been in two refs for oh geez, nearly twelve, is it 10, 12 years. I think is it was it? like two thousand nine, sure. something like that. Yeah, something like that. So it's um that was an adjustment. Yeah. Um, and then you got to readjust. <laughs> Yeah, so there's that, and then obviously the captain's challenge. So, if if I can use it when um, you know if players are going, I remember going through as a player, you're going through the grades, and even I knew it felt it going through as a referee. What happens is when you get accustomed to that level, yeah, things start to slow down, mm-hmm. and, and things start to happen, and you see. You see the good players, you know, like Andrew Johns. He had all the time in the world. Or, oh, he did. Know, it's JT, like he had all the time him, in the world. Yeah. yeah. So, as a referee or even as a player, it's no different. When when you're going through the grades, you get comfortable and like NRL is the fastest of the fast. It is. Yeah. So once yeah. you once you get acclimatized to that, it's sweet. When we went to one ref, you felt like for about forty minutes you were holding on for dear life. Yep. And that's how it felt. <laughs> So wow. we, we kind of use the um, we kind of use the analogy of a swan. 
mm-hmm. you know they, they're just gliding along the you know on a pond you don't know what what's going on underneath and where you see his feet are underneath they're just like, you know and they they're just um they're just going so fast yeah you know his feet are pedaling so fast but you don't notice it yeah that's that's kind of the analogy we like to use as a referee you know you you look you look calm and you act calm but on the inside but of your the- head or, or mate, yep. mate my head was running 100 mile an hour <laughs> those first 30 i'd say the first 30 40 minutes and then you become accustomed to it, and then you just go, "All right, sweet." You know? And is so that and is that there. still going for you even now after a few weeks um, with the one ref, or is it a lot easier now? That no, you've got I think it. Yeah, I think it's slowed down now. But like, and you've got to remember, and teams felt it the same as well. I mean, oh, we like, had how, how much time did we have off? Eight, eight weeks ish. About that. Weeks? Yeah, about that. You yeah. Know? So, so everyone goes into round. It was pretty much a round one all over again. It, round it three, really was, but yeah. with all new rules. But the difference was. And the difference for us, and it was probably no different to the players, we're like we we go out to the clubs and do run scrimmages, yep. so we can practice our movement and yeah, yeah and like they, I, they I saw Gavin Badger at at, um, yeah. at Eels um, Members yep. Day last year, yeah, exactly right. So that we we go out and we go and do that, um, and, and that's part of it. Like we obviously use that as part of our training. Yep. Then we would normally have scrimmages, uh, sorry, not scrimmages, our uh, trials. Yep. So we'd have maybe one or two weeks of trials. We didn't have that for round three. We had no, four weeks of training. Yeah. Um, and and like I I played ten years ago, so yeah. like I, I can pass the ball, but like we've got some refs that didn't play. They stopped playing when they were fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. So they're twenty twenty years plus of playing footy. So we're trying to um, make make do with what we got and trying to recreate. NRL standard yep. for our ref- to referee at training. We just can't do it. Like, yeah. <laughs> we do our best. We just yeah. can't do it. It's nah, simple as that. Honestly, right? that's so. fair. And speaking of your playing time, you made your debut for the Warriors in 2000. Um, obviously, being a, a boy from New Zealand and whatnot yourself, what was it like coming through the lower grades in New Zealand and then getting you know the call up saying, yep, you're getting your first grade debut this week sort of thing? Yeah, it's it was I debuted again. I'll never forget it. I, I think it, you can ask every single player. Um, and they'll never ever forget their debut. I actually got injured and we got oh. smoked. Um, oh. That's <laughs> we not a played good the Roosters. Yeah, so my, I remember my first two games, it was against the Roosters, so mm-hmm. it was in 2000. Mm-hmm. First game was against the Roosters, and the second game was against the Broncos. Oh, and the grand finals that year. Played. <laughs> Yep, uh, and we got smoked on both of them. But I never, I never forget, I was on the field and I was you know, 19 years old and that, and um, I remember getting, I was like, I was outside Stacey Jones, oh, one wow. of my all-time greatest uh, players, yeah, and one of my favorite people to ever say I've played with, you know. And um, I was like, Stace, give me the ball, give me the ball. And he goes, He goes, Yeah, 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 do you want this? I go, No, 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 I just want it early. <laughs> and then, and so Fittler was in front of me, oh, Brad Fittler yeah. was in front of me. Yeah. And he he turned around and he goes, I've got Perinara left foot step. And I was like, <gasps> Holy shit, he knows what I'm gonna do because yep. like my thing, I had a left foot step, yep. And I was like, uh, Go the other way, Stace, go the other way, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Made me shit bricks, and then yeah, he went the other way, and I was like, oh my god, like a playing thing. But no, it was it was amazing. Like I said, no one will you know, I'll never forget my debut. Um, growing up in New Zealand, uh, my mum took me and um, the eldest of six boys. Uh, mum took me and all my brothers to the Warriors' first ever in game 95, in ninety five, March ten ninety five. Yep, and um, I never forget. I I said to mum um, when we walked out, I was like, mum, we're going to play for the Warriors. And she was just like, oh, yeah. Oh, that no, good kids on, she's like, good on your son. Yeah. Good on your son, you know. And, <laughs> and like, so I, I made it my thing. I was lucky enough, my, my dad coached me growing up okay, a yep, bit. Yep. And so I was never the most um, most talented player. But you're the most hard working sort I worked, of thing. I worked the hardest, you know. So, like, my little brother, Marcus, yeah. um, he had 10 times the talent as me. 10 times the talent, but I had 10 times the workload, you know. Yeah. And, he, yeah, you know, and he's he was happy with what he did with thing, and I, like I wanted to obviously get involved in, and make footy a career, and um, yeah, I never forget it. Like get, getting that call, getting called up, um, the boss calls me in and goes, you know, you, you're playing this week, and I was just like, Holy did you call shit, your mum straight away like, saying, "Mum, I'm playing for the Warriors." Yeah, oh, <laughs> well, well, back 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 then we didn't have any phones, so oh, I kind of okay. had to just wait till I got home, and. Um, I think I had a phone, but it was like three dollars a minute. And yeah, like, something like that. <laughs> Eighteen year old, nineteen year old kid straight out of school. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to wait till I get home then, you know. Yeah. And um, went and told mum and and dad like they didn't come over, which um, 
you know, they said, oh, we would have liked to, but they didn't. But, like, because yeah. obviously it was on TV back then. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah, it was amazing. It was exciting. And, um, yeah, like I said, a few weeks later we had to play the Broncos. <laughs> and um, that was, yeah, I'll never forget that. <laughs> like, Gorn and Teller's run over the top of me a couple of times. So, yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was been, amazing. That would have been fun. Um, do you find there's a bit more pressure on you being a referee, given that you were also a former first-grade player? Uh, probably like earlier on mm-hmm. because there were there were guys that I'd played with I think okay. um so Cam, Cam Cam Smith still playing yep. very very lucky to say I played with him and I was in his debut 400 plus games ago yep um but in in the sense of of players that were playing back then the, not so much pressure but they felt they could talk to me differently and yeah. they probably did talk to me differently um, but you were like, no, nah, I'm in not the about sense that. Of, well, the the thing that I like when I when I took over when I decided to become a ref, I was like, if if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this to the best of my ability, and I'm going to do it to ref the NRL. Yeah, not going to ref me mates. I'm going to so, ref the NRL. I, yeah, and I, I guess, be, and it, it's funny because like people kind of think, oh, um, and I, I know a lot of a lot of my my friends in New Zealand or the friends of their friends when they know that like I'm their mates with them, they're like, he's so hard on the Warriors or he's so hard on this, he's so hard on I was going to say, it's some, some he people have been saying him. that when I was promoing it yesterday. I, they were like, <laughs> oh, why does he, you know, so hard on the Warriors or the Eels? I'm like, I don't think he is. I just, yeah, sorry, continue. I was just, just, so like, yeah, I just, my, my thing is I just, I just referee a game as I said. Exactly. You know, like yep. just, just, just how Badger does, I, Ashley Klein does, etc. Yeah, just because I, and I think, just because I played for those clubs, some people may think consciously or subconsciously that, oh, maybe you need to give them a, you know, you need to give them a go or, or stuff. But I'm just like, man, if they're going to do shit. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to call them. on like, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, not not let them get away with it because I played like, and then the other thing is, and then the other people say, oh, well, you shouldn't ref as former teams. And uh, man, if that was the case, I wouldn't be able to ref anyway because I played for so many bloody that, clubs. So. I was going to say, yeah, and out of all of those clubs, obviously one of them that would be the dearest to your heart would be the Warriors because you've got your debut there being from New Zealand. Um, which which clubs coach do you reckon have the biggest impact on you as a player and as a person during your time as a player? Yeah, it's tricky. It's tricky, hey. Because I had... I had Chris Anderson. Mm, I remember Chris Anderson. Remember Obes? So he was, he was in Melbourne. I went to Melbourne. He was the Australian coach at the time. Mm-hmm. So I, I wanted to be coached by him. Um, so I went there and then six weeks later, he got the sack. Oh, <laughs> so, so then we had Mark Murray. So that was a bit different. Um, we, had, we had Brownie at the Dragons. Brownie was excellent. See, every coach that I've had, they bought each bought their, their different things yep. to, to my career and um, you know, it's Brian Smith. I, I had Smithy at, um, Eels? at Parramatta yep. and he was like, for all people, the flaws that Brian Smith, they people say about Brian Smith, he is one hell of a coach. He, like, he is so smart. I don't know about coaching wise. Cause I haven't really obviously been playing NRL. Um, however, I have spoken to him about his career and he, yeah, there's honestly, he, he is so smart when it comes to his refer- sorry, you, refereeing, when I, it comes to his coaching. Yeah. You just, I just feel like, but every time he spoke, you you felt like shit. Shit, you're learning something, you know. Yeah. Um. And, and then obviously, and then I finished at uh, at Cronulla, and I had Sticky. Yeah. And Sticky was amazing. Like I like I rated like he obviously come from the Roosters, and then he was at Cronulla, and you know he'd been around and stuff. But like you have a look at what he's doing at Canberra. Oh. Like, he's doing he's doing amazing things, and that was nearly twenty years twenty years ago. He won the comp mm. with the Roosters, so yep. to still be as good as if yeah. not better I mean, than what he was so I, yeah. just the credit to him you know so it's it's a real it's a real tricky one to to say which which coast man it's it's hard it's okay. I, I don't think I could put it down to one no that's fair like cuz all of them gave gave you something in their own different way sort of thing mm, yeah exactly i mean like if you yeah it's Oh, it's too hard. I, <laughs> nah. I, I can't think. I'm trying to think. I'll go, oh, what about this one? One, one coach I have to mention, but mm-hmm. go one it. coach I do have to mention is, um, and he was my reserve grade coach. So when I, when I did play at Para, um, like, I was lucky enough. Like I remember when I first got there, Jay, Jason Taylor was the assistant yep. Yep. the reserve grade. And like, so he's this assistant coach, and then he was um, of first grade, but then he was the Premier League coach. Yep. 
And when I got there, he pulled me into his office and he said, listen, I know you're here to play first grade, but we want you to be captain of reserve grade. Oh, wow. And back then, like, if you're a captain of reserve grade, that's poison chalice if you're a first grader because mm. you're just like, forget that, man. I want, I'm here to play first grade. Yeah. And I, I and I said that to JT. I was like, mate, I don't want to do it, you know. So anyway, anyway I bit the bullet because we had a lot of young guys. Like, yep. We had a lot of young and me being uh, Maori Samoan. So we had a long young island boys and uh, Maori boys and that. So he kind of saw me as a good fit for that. So, yeah, as a leader sort but, of thing, yep. Yeah, well, because I was a bit one of the older, like when I say older, I was like 24. Yeah. <laughs> and we had like, like, so we had guys like Faletti Mateo, Chris Inu, Jared Hayne, that was 16. So, like Faletti was 18. Yep. Um, Inu was 19 or 17. Hainsey was 17. So, yep. um, so we did that. So I did that. But then when J2 moved up, my, like he moved up when Smithy got the punt. Mm. Um, oh, geez, a couple of coaches got the part. <laughs> Probably not. Hopefully, it's not because of me. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> um, but when JT when so we had a coach, and his name was Craig Cohen. Okay, and he and he kind of got thrown in. So he was the assistant coach. So when Smithy got the got moved on, JT went up and became the head coach. Power, and he actually took him to the semi. Yep. So this is two oh six. Yeah. And we had, we had Matt Cameron. And then Camo went up and took – so Matt Cameron's he's now head of football or football manager at Penrith now. Yep. And um, Cam, Camo went up and was assistant coach to JT, and we had, we had a guy who by the name of Craig Carnane. Okay. And if there's someone that, like, he, he never refereed – he never coached first grade, but I'll tell you what, he could coach. Yeah. Because he had he – had, like, we had a quality side. Like, if I look back at our 2006 reserve grade team, that like, we won the comp. Um. I'd go, go as far as saying 80% of those guys went and played NRL. And I think a lot of them should um, w- or would have a lot of, you know, would pay Craig Carnine a lot of respect and and his dues based on what he did with our team. Because yeah. we were kind of thrown together. We had a stack of injuries. Uh-huh. Like that was the year when um, Para had, because well, you're a Para fan, aren't you? No, I'm a so Broncos fan. Oh, Broncos. I yeah. should have seen from the back of from your... From the back, uh, but that's no, all good. Thing, I'm, yeah. I, I'm a fan of league in general, but I'm yeah. rugby league first, Broncos second, more or less, but yeah. continue, sorry. Yeah. Well, no, but yeah, they um, so they had a stack of injuries. So it was when Mick Vallard um, oh, had his yeah. cancer. Yep. Adam, like, so he was out. Aaron Cannings, he had a, he had a shoulder reconstruction. Um, we had Adam Peake, who, who was out injured for the season. So we had like... I key think, injuries as well, like Fui, key player injuries. Like, Fui was playing with us, and he got, like, suspended for six weeks. He, oh. he, he knocked, knocked Brent Kite out in a tackle. So, like, <laughs> what happen, Like what happens when you play reserve grade is if your first grade gets injuries or suspensions, mm-hmm. they take from your reserve grade, yeah, obviously. Yep. And we, we, were, we were just having bitses, like, just, just fill in, you know. Like, we had, we had guys that would play 15, 20 minutes here. And, Cully, like, to Cully's credit, Craig kind of ain't like, he held us together. I don't know how he did it, um, yeah. but he did it. And like, yeah, we had some good quality players, like players that, like we had Joel Reddy, John Williams, um, Chris Inu was playing with us, Blake Green, like yep. my brother, Felitti Mateo, Matt Keating, you know, Zebby wow. Taylor, like yeah. guys that uh, went on and did went some on and big a things. lot of things. Yeah, yeah, did a lot more than me. So, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, now he he definitely deserves a lot of credit, Cully. No, that's fair. Um, and speaking of going on to other things, obviously, um, you went on to become a referee, and we've mentioned that uh, earlier in the episode. But um, what was the deciding factor of retiring after what seemed to be more or less a short-ish career, because it was about seven years all up, and then going into refereeing? Um, well, bottom line was I had, and it wasn't because like people say I had like I had a few injuries. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd had. Through, like by the time I finished playing, I'd had three shoulder reconstructions Ooh. and an ankle reconstruction. Oh uh, yeah, not um, fun. So I was 20, 27 mm-hmm. and I'd had that many injuries. I'd had probably four scopes on my ankle. Um, yep. You know, so but in saying that, I got my last shoulder reconstruction to like I had another. I just re-signed at the Sharks. Yep. Um, bottom bottom line was I couldn't pick my. I had a two year old at the time. Mm. I couldn't pick them up for three days after a game. Oh wow! Because my shoulders were wrecked. Yeah, and um, you know, like I'll, I'll look back at my career, my like my NRL career, and I'll I kind of say I, I was probably a player that squeezed as much juice out of the lemon <laughs> as as I possibly could have. Yeah, um, you know, I was like, if if there's one thing I do regret, like, and I don't 
well, I wouldn't even call it a regret. Yep. Just um, in hindsight, I wanted sort of thing. to. Yeah, I wanted to play a hundred games. Okay. Like I thought, getting to a hundred games was um, achievable. Um, but and then I thought, well, you know, um, maybe if I had it stuck at it. But what happened was, I um, yeah, I, I couldn't pick my son up for two or three days after a game. Oh, and so and so when the yeah, well, it was hard, like because I was a new dad, and and like he was eighteen months or so, and I, I seriously just couldn't couldn't pick him up. Far I, out. Struggling to get him, and that's probably not um, that's probably not uncommon for players mm. because like for how hard the game is these days. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just couldn't I couldn't do it. So when the NRL actually approached me, um, like I, I had a a really um, tricky time to to decide whether or not you know, to, to actually do refereeing. Like I'd had my shoulder done and then walked in there and they, like the guy, his name was Matt Francis, he turned around, he was the prior to each club having a welfare and education. The mm-hmm. NRL just had one. Yep. And he was the, he was the one guy, he was the well, And he, he hit me up because I actually went for a, um, a development officer job the year before. Okay. And they turned it down because they, well, they turned me down because they turned around and said they couldn't fathom why an NRL player would want to give up footy. Yeah. And because I kind of had that notion prior to that. And uh, so when when he called me in the office, he was like, oh, you know, really, we know about that job. We think you should have got it. But I was like, whatever. And he goes, would you, what do you think of refereeing? And I just went, I don't know. Like, in my head straight away, I was like, bunch of assholes. <laughs> like, that's what I was thinking straight yeah. away. Yeah. Bunch of pricks, you know, and... And because um, I was a captain at like playing reserve guys, so it was funny because the guys that um, were refing me then are guys that I ref with now. Yeah. <laughs> so so he turned around and he goes, "Oh, the NRL are going to do this cadetship. Would you consider becoming one?" And I felt like turned around and saying, "Me, shove that up your ass." But I was yeah. just like, "Oh, I don't know. Like, I'll, I'll give it a crap." So then um, I said, oh, I'll, "I'll think about it." And then I went in on a Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And I never forget, he turned around and he goes, uh, and I'm thinking it's just a Q&A. Yeah. Like just getting more information because I'm just like, man, I don't even know if I want to do this, but I'd be silly to, to not, to not find get out all the information. Day. Yeah. Yeah. So then um, they offered me three times what I was on at Cronulla. Oh, wow. Which which I, and when I say like, people will think that, um, you know, I was on a, a stack of cash. I was on 20 grand at Cronulla. So oh. my first contract as a ref was 60 grand. Yeah, to be wow. a cadet, yep, which isn't obviously isn't that much money, um, but still more. They gave me three, but they it was three times more. So I was I was working part time to make yep. ends meet. So when people hear about all of the money that footballers are making, like that's probably like the top ten percent, like yeah. the the bottom fifty percent or thirty percent. I was in the bottom twenty or thirty yep. percent that um, plowed away and lived week to week like anybody else would. Yeah, um, and and change it for the world. I would uh, if I could jump in a time machine. I'd probably do the same thing. Yeah, you know. So they offered me that, and um, they said, "Oh, you've got you know." Instead of being a Q and A, it was basically like, "Here's your deal." Yeah, Here's and deal, they said you've it. got till Friday. Yep. Yeah. Well, they said you've got till Friday. So what happened? They go, well, "You got till Friday. We want to do a press conference because this is going to be big." You know, like three X players. So they had they had myself. They had Luke Phillips. Yep. And they had Paul Mallow. So we were the three inaugural cadets. Paul Mallow had retired. Mm-hmm. So he was like, yep. So they were older than me. They were like six, seven years older. Yep. Um, Di- Di- Luke Phillip, Diamond retired two years prior. Mm-hmm. So he was already keen to jump on board. Whereas I was like, oh, I don't know. So they said, you got till Friday. So I went back. I left the NRL. That's when it was at Fox Studios. I left there and went to... Um, Went to my warehouse job, which I was working driving a forklift like, oh, to wow. make it make extra cash, and yep. then I got a call at three thirty, and like my boss gave me the time off, like I got three hours off to go and do this meeting. Got a call at three thirty. It was um, guy around. They said, "Oh, we change. You need, we need to know by five o'clock." Oh, five o'clock today. So he goes five o'clock today, oh. and I was just like, "Oh shit!" So I rang, I rang my mum, yeah. rang my dad, rang my brother, and they were like, "Don't do it, <laughs> don't do it." And um, so I just like I just started like I was with a new new girlfriend at the time. Yep. And um, she was the only person like that said to me. She was just like, "You got to look at it." She goes, "I'm not telling you what to do." She goes, "But you got to look at it from an opportunity." Yeah. Point of view. 
um, she goes, they're chasing you. They're, they've actually asked you, not the other way around. Exactly, yeah. And I just went, oh, okay. And, and then she goes, the other thing is, you could potentially do this for 10 years. Exactly. 10 It'll, plus years. And you'll still be on the field. You'll be, you know. Yeah. 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 So, like, there was that. So, then there was that. Um, Mum and dad, or dad especially, who was a pretty big thing in my um, life of footy, he, he said no because the World Cup was the next year. Yeah. And I just, I'd, I'd had a really back, good back end with Cronulla, but okay, done yep. my shoulder so again. So he wanted you to try and, and work so towards I, the World well, Cup I just, squad. Well, yeah, well, I just missed out on the Kiwis. They were traveling oh, and I just yep. missed out on the Kiwis. But because I was Samoan, um, Nigel could... Vangana, who was, I was going to play for them yeah. if I didn't miss out on the Kiwis. So Nigel actually wanted me to go to America and England to qualify with the Samoans mm-hmm. to help them qualify. But I had my shoulder fixed, so... I didn't end up doing that. So dad was like, maybe what if you think about doing it next year? And one of the questions I asked was like, is this opportunity going to be available next year? And their thing was, well, they're not sure because it's inaugural. If mm. it goes good, yes. If it doesn't, then they'll scrap yeah. it. So anyway, yeah, yeah look, like 12 years later, I'm still doing it. So yeah. obviously <laughs> bit the bullet and um, made it was hard. One of the hardest things I um, I struggled with was um, – and making that actual decision was like my, my old man. He um, out like we we fell out a little bit. Yep. Because he was just like I can't understand why you made that decision, and mm-hmm. and you know, but yeah, um, he came round. Yep. Um, I had to tell Ricky Stewart over the phone. Oh, um, yeah, well, yeah, because there's been the, was, those two hours that you had difficult. to let him. Yeah. Yeah. So like my boss, like I actually asked my boss. I was like, listen, can I leave? I need to go tell Ricky Stewart, and he was like, listen. I've just let you leave for three hours. I can't. We're so busy. And I kind of felt bad to turn around and say to him, yeah, well, shove it. I've got to do it. But, yeah. um, but I, I said, no, you're exactly right. I, I'm like, I'm trying, trying to do the right thing. So, And yeah. then I actually rang Ricky and I said, listen, mate, I'm really sorry. This is what I'm doing. And he was like, mate, I wish you all the best. So, like, I never oh, forget. That's good like, of him. Like, yeah. And like, I was probably 27, 28, 29 of his squad of 30. Yeah. You know, he didn't have to show me that time. You probably, no um, offense, weren't his first choice, even with exactly even, right. even without injury, sort of thing. Yeah. So, um, uh, like, I, I got a lot of respect and due credit to what Sticky done, and that, like, that just goes to show that the the type of coach that he actually is. You know, yeah. like he was all about the players, and and he was just like, listen, if you um, ever want to come down and say hello, please don't be a stranger. So every time I see, like, if I'm warming up, I'll go over and shake Ricky's hand. Like, yeah. Um, regardless, you know. No, so that, that's lovely. He'd probably bag, he'd probably bag the shit out of me if I stiff his team or something. But yeah, like, it's not, it's not personal, and it yeah. never is. No, that's fair. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that. Let's go to some uh, fun questions. If you could have one superpower, what would it be and why? Um, probably fly. Yeah, <laughs> probably fly. Yeah, that would be or teleport. So because one traffic. Mm. Like you can miss all traffic, and yeah. then two, all my family live in New Zealand, so I can just fly there straight away. Yeah, yeah. Or even if you can teleport, that's what you don't skip, skip the middleman with flying. You can just get zap there, uh-huh. zap back. <laughs> Angie, honestly, that'd be so good. Um, yeah. This one's a bit of a, I guess, I, I don't know, fun one. I guess when you were a player, which team for you personally was the toughest to go up against mentally and physically? Um. Oh, jeez. It felt so long ago. It's hard. <laughs> well, well, so... It doesn't it, have to be a it, certain it team. It, it, it can be teams, though. Or, yeah, it, it was ebb, ebbing and flowing. So I remember, like, I obviously only played three games at, at the Warriors, so that was just, like, hold on for dear life stuff. So every game was hard. Yep. But I remember when we were at, when I was at Melbourne. Yep. So the Broncos were, Broncos were good. Okay. Um, the Broncos were good. And obviously, Para were... Where, there. Yeah, that was when Para had that gun. Like Para had that. Like they should have won the grand final when yeah. before Newcastle stole it from them. <laughs> yep. Um, so they were hard. I but I'll tell you, like back in the day playing Newcastle up in Newcastle. Yeah. Like when on a Friday night. So I remember we played. I played in the game. Um, it was post Origin, and we had like I was at the Dragons. We had Rollsy, Jace Riles, Luke Bailey, Sean Simmons, oh, Gazdier, dude, Cooper. Just they all played Origin. In my head, yeah. Yeah, and I was like. <laughs> You know, so they like, but then the other team, like, so Joey was playing. Danny Badiras, um, the so Gidleys. So Joe, like, Bedsy, yeah, Gidley was playing. Um, and it was a Friday night post origin. They sold out. And yeah. like, we had Lance Tom, like, we had Ben Hornby, Lance Thompson yep. playing with us. God rest his soul. I was going to say, rest in peace. Um, yep. mm, and um, I remember we we got 
like we're up 24 20 oh yeah and we got a we got a penalty underneath the post and it was like a minute to go and yeah we said yeah we chewed up all the time in the world we could and we kicked it out and anyway tomo dropped the ball off the off the um kick off off the tap off no the off tap. the tap and then they go wide then they go wide and wide and then Madugal scores in the other corner. Oh. And so it makes it 24. The siren was gone. You probably would have seen the game. And Joey kicks a goal after the siren yep. to win the game on a Friday night. And I, like, I was sitting there, like I was on the field, just everyone's going, golden point, golden point. And I'm like secretly going, yes, please, golden point. But then kind of like in your heart of hearts, you go, no, just going. And if there's one person you don't want to take the shot at goal, from the sideline, it's Joey. Yeah. And kick the goal after sorry, and then they go nuts and we walk we, we bus ride home with our tail between our legs. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> it was punishing. So that yeah, they were hard. I, like every game I play I don't think I ever won up there. Wow. Uh, up in Newcastle. For every team like, you played up against for every against... team I played, yeah. I remember we played I played them against Melbourne. Like, that was two oh one, two oh two. Both times we played them we got smoked. Oh, um wow. we got smoked up there and even even I think we beat them once with Para, but that's because Joey had his neck injury. Yeah, yep. <laughs> and so they, I think we played them when like they were on that streak of like losing like ten or twelve in a row. Yep, which um, the Broncos are looking not too hot at the moment with that. <laughs> oh, geez, yeah, they're struggling a bit, aren't they? I Poor spoke dudes. to Chris Walker yesterday, um, and he definitely had some choice words for Seabold. So, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but then, but in in, in, in Walker's um, rookie year, the Broncos went not, like lost nine out of their first ten games. So yeah, well. and then they made semis that year. So I mean, fingers crossed, but I doubt the yeah. Broncos are going to make the eight this year. <laughs> oh, it's so yeah, it's so hard. Hey, you feel like I felt like before before they started. Um, sorry, round one and two. Yeah, like yeah, they look like they look like they, you were going. Jeez, they look yeah hot. And then it, it's like, like they're just stuck in the blocks. Yeah, you feel like they're just still it's in like the what blocks. What happened during about. COVID? Yeah, I want to know what and, happened during COVID. Yeah, you're nearly kind of waiting there for them to jump out of the blocks again. You know, because yeah. they, geez, they've got some talent there. Like, know, so. I feel like though, when they do win a game, it's gonna steamroll and win a few games in a row. You know, but I mean, I'm hoping. Um, Spoken like a true fan. Yep. Um, I mean, I wore my Broncos jersey to the Bulldogs Bunnies game. Oh, wow. Yeah. After, the I day after we lost, the sixth game in a row, I wore my Broncos jersey to the game. Jeez, good on you. Yeah. I'm one percenter all the way. Um, but I do love sport regardless. And talking about sport, you've got a, a big family into sport. You know, as you were mentioning, your, your father, your brother Marcus. You've also got um, your cousin TJ, who's... Uh, All Blacks halfback. What's it like um, mm. having such a big, you know, you could say sport connection with your family and whatnot? Yeah, it's um, it's pretty cool. Teacher's teacher's like one of our little brothers. Like mm-hmm. he's because he's it's um, so growing up. So his his god his dad is my godfather. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've always been pretty close to his old man. Um, growing up, always when I was at the Warriors or at Melbourne, wherever I was, I'd always try to come home because they're obviously in Wellington. Yep. So my family are in Auckland. So every time I'd go home, I'd go down there and spend four or five days in Wellington just to hang with Uncle Tom. Wow. Um, and so then Uncle Tom would come up and teach like when he was growing up, but he kind of wanted, so my, one of my little brothers, uh, him and TJ are probably three months apart. Oh, wow. So and they'd so, be really close. Uh, yeah. So they're, they're super tight. I'm kind of like a, like, would like you be closer to Sunny Bill than you would TJ or? Uh, age-wise, probably like age-wise I'm closer to Sunny. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've got that many brothers. Sunny's actually really tight with one of my other brothers who's okay. like my best mate, Marcus. So yep. they, Sunny and Dukes, Sunny and Dukes, um, Marcus, or well, we call them Dukes. Yep. Um, him and Dukes grew up together. Okay. So they played against each other. It was um, going through the grades back home and Sunny's grade, it was Sunny. Uh, my brother and Tommy Lulua. Oh wow! So those, those three guys were the three guys, the guns going growing up. Um, but yeah, with T, I'm probably in terms of being who, who I'm close to, I'm probably more closer to Teej. Yep. Um, I'll still every time I go home at Christmas, I'll try and catch up with Son, with Sunny, and that um, Sunny's older brothers really tight with one of my other brothers. Okay. Um, yep. So it's a really big close knit family. Yeah, obviously with family like island families, man, they're just like yeah, like. We're cousins, like we've got cousins everywhere. Like, we've got cousins all over the world. <laughs> yeah. So it's um, it's quite funny. Like every like, obviously we're not traveling as much now, but every time I've got there's a game somewhere, I was like, man, I need tickets for my family, <laughs> for my cousins. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. But TJ, TJ's like pretty much like he's kind of like my little brother. Mm-hmm. Um, 
you know, we're, we're at his wedding. My, my brother, uh, Chris, is um, he was one of the groomsmen for Teacher's wedding. Oh, wow. Um, and all me and all my brothers were there. It's, um, yeah, so I've kind of got that relationship um, with him as like a, like a big brother. Like, it's, it's funny, like, I could go... I could go months without talking to him. But then when you but talk then, to him, it's a, like... But then we talk to him, we'll, we'll speak to him for like two hours. Yeah, we'll speak to him for like two hours. Or like I'll just... Like I'll send him a message. I remember the last time, like... I did. I had a game in Wellington. Mm-hmm. Like the war, like I did the Warriors play. I can't even remember who they played. Do you? In Wellington. And um, and Tej, I rang him and I was like, bro, what are you doing? And he was like, this weekend. He goes, oh, we're playing the Highlanders on Friday night. Mm. And I was like, dude, I'm there on Saturday. And he was like, yep, sweet. Come out, we'll have a beer. And it was just like, it was just like, we caught up with each other last week, you know, yeah. and it's giving, it, giving each other stick. Um, <laughs> we, yeah, so like he's, he's tight. But yeah, like with Sonny, he's, like, I want to catch up with him and try and try and keep up with him to train, like, because he's just a beast. Like, yeah. he's just unbelievable. <laughs> and, that, and it's, it's scary to see how like big and real life he actually is. Like, TJ or Sonny, sorry. I, I'm, Sunny, oh, sunny, he's like, huge. I, like when, <laughs> like I, I'm like the tallest out of my fan, like me and my brothers. Yep. But Sunny's like I'm up to Sunny's shoulders. <laughs> it's like, and like I'll stand next to him, and he makes me look like I'm standing next to a basketballer. Like, but then not only that, like his shoulders are as are as wide as he is tall. You know, yeah. so he's just he's just a freak. But no, it's 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 unreal. Like it's really cool how we all, you know, we all try and catch up and. And you know, do what we do. Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, and speaking of beers, as you were mentioning, your t- Tej usually says, you know, oh, let's have a catch up for a beer. What is your beer of choice at the moment? I've always been a. Uh, you can't go past the Corona, can't you? Ah. Uh, well, uh, whether or not you turn around and say, say that due to the coronavirus, but <laughs> it's hard. It's it's hard to go past the Corona or a. Um, otherwise, I'm a member, like when my brother Marcus used to live here. We used to get stuck into the Forex, you know, Forex Summers. Yeah, Forex Summer Bright Lager. Yeah. yeah it's, oh, mate, that's that quality. So good. But um, it's it's just tricky because obviously, like, we're not traveling, mm. so it's like you don't get that. Like, say, if I have a go- game on the Goldie, um, and we're staying in overnight, like, you can have a few beers in the in the room and in our hotel room or at a pub, like, because we're kind and of flying, flying fly fly out, out now, yeah. and, and then most the majority of the time you'll have a game on a Friday. Or Thursday, or you'll have an appointment on a Thursday or Friday, and then you'll be back ended as well on a Saturday or a Sunday. Yeah. So, um, and then because there's no origin, so there's no short round, so it's kind of like it's um, a bit of a struggle trying to sneak a beer in here and there. <laughs> no, that's fair. <laughs> that's the bit. No, that's fair. Um, and I guess more or less, there's uh, two more topics really. One would be: Do you have any advice for any kids who are wanting to make it in the big league as a player and also as a referee? Um. Uh, oh, for from a player's point of view, like I'm really, I'm probably really, really close mates with Monty Beatham. Mm-hmm. Um, so everyone members Mons who went boxing and and you know he's he's the Warriors captain for a while there. He he talks and we talk about it a fair bit. Like, um, and I, I don't want to screw the, the saying up. Like, te- hard work is it hard work beats talent when talent does. doesn't work hard. It does. Is that, yeah. is that the saying? Uh, more or less, yeah. So, I've heard that from a few players as well. Yeah. Yeah. So like I and because you you can be the most talented if you compare some like you can be the most talented but that talent will yeah. run out if you get some injuries going you know but if you're the hardest worker yeah yeah totally yeah so like if you compare like and I, I don't like comparing things but like if you want to compare um, me and my brother Marcus like we're di- yes different positions and, and and stuff and different age but I worked and I, he he won't be ashamed to when I say this. Like I worked ten times as hard as him, mm-hmm. but he had ten times more talent. Yeah. Like, and I'm saying when I say ten times more talent, I I'm probably underselling it. <laughs> he was that talented. It's not funny. Um, and I think I said it earlier. I, I probably squeezed the lemon dry. Yep. For my for my career, and um, you know, so so in saying that, like my advice for young young kids coming through. You need to work hard. Like, yeah. don't don't just think because you're in a rep team or you're the um, you're the biggest and you're fittest and the fastest or you're the strongest in your grade um, that it's going to happen. Because when you grow up, like I, I grew up back home in mm-hmm. New Zealand, where island boy, like I everyone's wasn't big. big. <laughs> I wasn't big at all. Yeah, island boys were massive. Like, so I'm playing against like I'm 15 years old playing against dudes that are over six foot, hundred plus kilos, and I was like 70 kilo ring and wet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So I, I, I used to train hard, like really hard. 
um, and that work ethic from when I was younger kind of s- stuck, stuck with me. Yeah. Right, Dad. So, like, my, my eldest son at the moment now is 14, so I'm trying to instill that into him, you know, because mm-hmm. he's quite t- he's quite tall. He hasn't filled out yet. So I'm just like, mate, you got to do this. Like, just because you're the biggest and the um, strongest in your team doesn't mean that you're going to – you're going to go ahead and make it. You need to work hard on your skills. You, 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 those are the things that you know, will hold you in good stead over the grades. And then your work ethic will just increase yeah. gradually over time, you know? No, yeah, that's fair. So so that, that's probably the – and then that probably you – know, that would probably be the same thing as a you know, as a referee. Like yeah. and one, of, one of the things like – like I work my ass off to be a ref. Um but like I stripped in the first four months, I stripped ten kilo. Oh wow! Um, or six months to to be you know, what I, what I needed to be as a ref. Like, yeah. and then not only that, like learning the rules, learning completely different movement patterns and and whatnot. And you know, that work ethic has probably held me in good stead over time. Mm-hmm. But the one thing I will say is like the the difference with refereeing and the difference with playing is refereeing can be so subjective. Mm, it can so. What you think is a good referee and what I think is a good referee can be two, like, we can have two referees out of one referee ref one game and then one ref the uh, next game and they'd be identical games. Mm-hmm. But you might think referee A will go better. Or I might think referee B will go better. Exactly. So, like, my, my biggest, like, my advice with the exception of hard work is just to be yourself. Yeah. Um, because, like, one thing I try and advise no one can be you better than you. Hey, yeah, that's um, true. You can, you can kind of, you can kind of take, things from people and use them mm-hmm. like what you used to do as a player um like i can take uh, some things that say jerry sutton might do or ben cummins and go or ash klein and go yep you know what? i like that i'll put that into my individual game but yeah. I, I remember going when i was younger and coming through the grades i was trying to talk like ben cummins or talk like jerry sutton man they use far too many words and bigger words <laughs> where you're just that like i could not like, explain yeah, like, i just want to check Grounding well, or well, it was just like me trying to articulate the way they do. Mm. It, it just doesn't. It just comes across as fake as hell, and <laughs> and does just it just feels uncomfortable for me. Yeah, I couldn't do it. Yeah, you know, and and they can do it, and that's who they are, and that's yeah. that's great. So my thing was, man, I'm just going to be me, and the way I talk to players, I'll talk to them the way that I would just talk to them normally. Yep. Um, and saying that, if they kind of if they start getting mouthy, bad, then, gotta, yeah, yeah, you kind of got to do what you need to do. But in in the sense of doing stuff and the way you go about it, like no, like do exactly what you need to do. But no one can be you better than you out. I was going to say, yeah, and that, that'll express it. Yeah, so and, and that brings up a, a heated topic really at the moment with Manly fans with Adam Fanua Blake this last this past round with obviously what went on with him. I personally one hundred percent back the referee and also the pen like the penalized that, that you know he's got two weeks suspension because of it um how would you have handled the situation would you have sent him off for 10 or would you have sent, sent oh, him yeah, off absolutely it, yeah yeah no, no brainer honestly yeah I, you can't do that obviously call the referee sir or you know or whatever but you, you cannot you can back chat but you can't straight up insult yeah. the referee you know yeah, and even then um, back chat isn't, yeah, isn't too welcome yeah there's yeah there's obviously you know he Stepped over the line and and you know he he came out straight away like he he actually came to his credit he, like I was on standby in that game and to his credit he um him and Desi knocked on the door and asked to apologise and they apologised and, okay. and said what he said and stuff like that but no you exactly it, right. it was the heat of the moment but unfortunately it has to happen you know it, he needed to be sent off so. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that about wraps it up, all the topics and stuff that I've got time for. So thank you very much for the chinwag. Um, I'll definitely get you on probably at the end of the season to um, talk about how the refereeing with the new rules going on at the end of the season sort of thing. Yeah, no, too easy, mate. No, it's an absolute pleasure. And thanks very much for having me.